You know, there's been a lot of talk lately about identity politics ruining our pop culture. But how do you know what to believe? Well, here's a few tips that may help you tell when you've got an SJW. Hello there, I'm Jack, and you are? I'm an anthropomorphic, non-binary, queer, SWAT cat of color. My pronouns are he, ha, huh, and you will respect our not-so-secret gay agenda. If his answer sounds like an irrational, drunk, gender studies college student, you've got an SJW. So, uh, what do you think of all these diversity swaps of popular characters? I mean, black Superman? A bunch of random, multi-sexually orientated, racially diverse nobodies called Captain America? Superheroes with internet mean names? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't like all these tokenized and cheap ripoff characters that will probably become irrelevant within the next decade? That means you're a racist, white supremacist, misogynistic, homophobic, ripperverse loving Trump supporter. But I'm not even white. If instead of a calm and rational conversation about the obvious destruction of beloved superheroes, you get called the numerous and overused ists and phobes these theoretical fans have words for, you've got an SJW. In this day and age, you can't speculate about someone's sexuality unless they're famous or peppermint patty. Um, okay. Well, uh, jeez, man, and I thought She-Hulk was the worst I'd seen of talentless sellout writers adapting a legacy franchise for the modern audience. Velma. Hmm. Vomit exfoliating lesbians murdering animation. Velma. <laughs> now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I really had no desire nor intention to review this theoretical comedy featuring legacy characters from a franchise I adored as a child and still do today. I mean, shit, man, the first trailer HBO Max released wasn't exactly a warm welcome. Dear HBO Max, I just learned you intend to make a genre-bending comedic origin story of Judy Jetson. When I heard this new version of Judy Jetson wouldn't be boy crazy, the only word I had to describe my disgust is jinkies. If there is one thing the internet agrees on, it's that you should never change anything ever. I hope you die. Sincerely, Velma. Well, at least Judy's still white. <sighs> Besides, we've already seen the crap fest that is old franchises being updated for the modern audience. But it was my birthday recently, a few too many Dr. Peppers, and slaying half the armies of hell later, and I felt the need to take a dump on yet another failed identity politics experiment. So, here we are. Oh, uh, fair warning, grab the strongest drink you can find because you're going to need it. Again. So Velma starts off with a predictable fourth wall breaking monologue taking a jab at men, origin stories, and a few other retarded complaints about how women are treated. It's a type of dialogue that heavily hints at the real possibility that the creators of this show have no concept of how the world works, and in particular, how fandoms view the franchises they love. Now obviously this behavior is par for the course these days. Regardless, it's still hilarious to see these morons try to insult their audience. Sorry, Mindy, a certain round-headed twat that loves subverting expectations already blew that proverbial fish out of the water. <laughs> we then get a group of high school girls showering naked together and complaining about the gratuitous nudity in TV shows, while displaying that exact same thing. Um... Oh yeah, there's two cockroaches screwing. <laughs> yes, that's a real thing that happens in this episode. And hilarious enough, all this BS happens in the first three minutes. So afterwards, some boring shit happens regarding a dead girl in Velma's locker. She gets blamed for the murder, and now she's on a journey to prove her innocence and find the actual killer. We get introduced to the rest of the gang as the first episode goes along. 
And this is where the stupid really shows off. Now look, we've all seen bad TV shows or movies that have ridiculous plots. With that said, this show's theoretical mystery plot, as basic as it comes off, isn't the inherent issue. The characters are. And in particular, the recreation and retelling of Mystery Inc. First and foremost, everyone but Fred is tokenized. And more on Fred in a bit. Velma's now Indian, Daphne is Asian, and Shaggy, oh, sorry, Norville, is black. Why? Who knows? Now, you're probably wondering, why isn't Fred tokenized? Well, it's a simple answer, really. How does one take a strong, smart, and charismatic leader like Fred Jones and make him lesser? Easy. Make him the animated equivalent of Chris Hemsworth in Ghostbusters 2016. Yeah. That mind. Would it be okay if I bring my cat to work sometimes? Uh, he has major anxiety problems. You know what? I, I would love to let your cat live here with you, but I have a pretty severe cat allergy. Oh, I don't have a cat. It's a dog. His name's my cat. Your, your dog's name is my cat? And Mike Hat. Your dog's name is Mike, last name Hat. Well, his full name is Michael Hat. I can't say that I'm allergic to dogs, so... Yeah, that's all right. He lives with my mom. This bastardized version of Fred, who I will lovingly call Bread Boned, is the embodiment of a hardcore SJW's idea of what strong white men should be and or are. Oh, he also apparently hasn't hit puberty yet for some reason. He acts like a mentally deficient college student with image issues, and it's obvious and predictable as to why Fred is handled this way. Modern day Hollywood can't stand the idea of a strong man being confident and in charge of his own life. It seems these people are on a mission to be little men at every angle and elevate women to the status of godhood and gender superiority. Speaking of which, Norville here is not only a victim of tokenization, but a victim of this belittle and weaken men agenda as well. They make him weak and desperate for Velma's attention, and I find it funny they would go this far with a black man. Though, compared to how Fred is treated, Norville's treatment is very tame. There's another big element that's been neglected here. Scooby-Doo himself. In this first episode, there's no mention of the beloved talking dog, and considering how shit this first episode is, it's probably a good thing, because I can only imagine what they would have done to him. Apparently the character of Scooby is what made the franchise appealing to kids. Uh, no shit. It's a kid's show. Yet, it was still entertaining enough that adults could enjoy it too. Maybe it's just me, but the original has such a nice appeal to it. Something that keeps me hooked and entertained. Maybe it's the music, characters, or the plot. But the plot itself is innocent enough, yet very meaningful. The same can't be said for this shit show. There's not much to the plot. It's basically every 90s slasher plot, but put to animation and injected with predictable identity politics. You know, we've seen so many classic franchises go up in flames at the hands of these ideological apocalyptic horsemen of death and destruction over the past 10 years, and Scooby and the gang, or just the gang in this case, are the latest victims. With just one episode of this series, HBO Max has turned what was once a beloved animated show with well-written characters and entertaining stories into I Know What You Shit last summer. And as if history is repeating itself, I ask the question, is this show worth watching? Simple. Fuck no. In fact, take a cue from my She-Hulk review. Don't waste your time or money. This piece of cinematic waste has made its intentions very clear with its first episode. And like with She-Hulk, I refuse to watch any more of it. So here's a nickel's worth of free advice. Stick with the original Scooby-Doo, some of the animated films from the 90s like Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, and the live-action Scooby-Doo Monsters Unleashed, and avoid this bullshit. Fuck Velma, fuck HBO Max and their identity politics-driven agendas. You will lose in the end, it's just a matter of time. Because if Hollywood continues to go down the path of demoralization and corruption, it will only inspire others to rise above it and give consumers another reason to seek alternatives. And the good news is, the entertainment is out there. I'm Special Agent Spooky Clutter. I'm Special Agent Carter Sauce. Special Agent Dr. Rick Toffin. And until next time, fellow investigators, remember... The, the entertainment, entertainment, the entertainment, the entertainment, the entertainment, the entertainment is out there.